Welcome to the Hot Slice, Pizza Today's podcast about all things pizza. I am creative director Josh Cannon. With me today is executive editor of Pizza Today, Denise Greer. Hello, Denise. Hello, Josh. It's uh, it's uh, we we have a great episode today. It's one of those episodes where I just kind of sit back and just love to listen to. You know, yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, well, it's Pizza Man Dan, Dan Collier, uh, Pizza Man Dan, and he, he's just one of those guys. He's he's so knowledgeable. He's thirty years in the business. Um, if you've been to Pizza Expo, you know exactly who he is. You can't miss Dan. You cannot right. miss him on the show floor or I, driving around Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and his and his pizza Corvette. So yeah, um, but uh, I've been going to the expo for 14 years, and he's one of the only few things that I like remember from the very first expos that I yep. went to. So it's like, it's like, so I, you know, him and expo go hand in hand with me. Absolutely, um, but and it, he was, was so nice at my first expo. Walked up, yeah, you know, yeah. shook my hand, told me he's glad that I'm in the industry, that that he wanted, you know. He was excited that, you know, that I was with pizza today. And yeah, so, so, so welcoming. And he's like that with everyone, every operator that he meets. Yeah. Well, speaking of Pizza Expo, we are eight weeks away, eight weeks eight out. Weeks away. We're going to start yeah. doing our update show here pretty soon. You know, it's really coming up fast. It, January <laughs> is over. Thank goodness. Uh, and uh, yeah, things are looking real good for us in March and uh, Pizza Expo. We're super excited. There are a few competition spots still open. I think traditional yeah. still has a few competition spots open. Um, pan's done. Sure right? pan pan's done. done. Yeah, I think yeah. pan's done. So, yeah. yeah. So if you're uh, interested in, in competing uh, for the international at the international pizza challenge, get online and check it out. And uh, don't be afraid. Be, Just do it. Yeah. Just it, do it. It's going to be so good, regardless <laughs> for you and for your pizzeria. Yeah. And from one, the one thing I've learned from other operators talking about when they go and compete, they said, even if they don't win, they, um, they learn so much in competing because they're in there with the best, of, the best in the world. And they're, they're learning from them and they're learning from themselves about how to, you know, create in such a time can time pressed environment and stressful environment. It's good to get uncomfortable. It's yeah, good to get uncomfortable. It is. You, you know, grow from that, say. so yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, we are also going to be bringing the hot slice uh, back to Pizza Expo this yes, year, we so are. so uh, stay tuned for details on that. Yeah, um, and, but hey, uh, if you do show. want, if you are wanting to talk to us on the hot slice at Pizza Expo, send me an email because I yep. want to hear from you at dgreer at pizzatoday.com. Okay, that's it. That's my plug. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I think we're good to go. Oh, oh, one more thing's coming up. February 9th is National Pizza Day. National so, Pizza Day. Uh, yeah, roll that I mean, into your market if you have. Well, yeah. I every day is National Pizza. But National Pizza Day is a good sales spike. If you want to use it, uh, you know, hit, hit it up. Use it on social. Um, you, you will see a bump. Yeah. For sure. for sure. All right. Well, let's uh, let's quit wasting everybody's time and get into, uh, get into it. The, the, the Pizza Man Dan. With extraordinary pizza cheese comes extraordinary rewards. Only Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese offers the Gold Club Rewards Program with a monthly cash back on every cheese purchase. Members also receive funds twice a year to use in their exclusive marketing store. It's their way of saying grazie to customers. Schedule a demonstration at bacciocheese.com slash hot slice and discover how rewarding Baccio exceptional Italian pizza cheese can be. Pizza is your legacy. Build it with Baccio. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. All right. <laughs> All right, Dan, it's finally, it's great that we haven't had you on the podcast yet, have we? Uh, not yet, Josh. All right, so it's, it's well, 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 well overdue. Uh, the Pizza Man Dan is on, is on the uh, Hot Slice podcast. Welcome, and uh, thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, you know, Expo is just around the corner, and, you know, you're one of the people that, that when I think of Expo, I, uh, you're one of the people I think of as well. I mean, you're oh, yeah, ingrained sure. <laughs> into 
uh, Pizza Expo. I mean, you're just part of it now. So it is. So uh, yeah, what what brings you back each year, and uh, you know, um, what are you looking forward to uh, teaching this year? Well, as you probably well, you may not know, I started bringing my team to Pizza Expo in the late '90s, and uh, was invited by Pizza Expo to get involved uh, in teaching and. I say teaching, but really it's sharing my mistakes. Right. <laughs> uh, back in 2002. So mm -hmm. I've had a lot of fun in these past 20 years with Pizza Expo. And every year we bring my team, every year they bring back amazing things that they change in their business. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's fun to plan in advance for the Expo of what we're going to learn as a team and then come back and have them present what they learned and what they think we should implement in our business. Uh, and I've had anything from small teams, uh, you know, during COVID, uh, we couldn't even manage to get more than eight people there, but I've had up to 20 people uh, come from my team. And there's a lot of value in that for my company. Uh, what excites me the most about teaching is they say, if you want to learn something better to teach it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's exactly what happens with me is, when I'm preparing something, I have an advantage, and that is that I have eight pizzerias that I can test things on. Mm -hmm. So when I'm preparing something, I, I am able to not only do it through research, but through trial and error and come, come in with real results of what happens uh, with this. And that has been controversial at times, uh, especially when you get into third-party stuff, but <laughs> it has been very valuable uh, to my company to learn with Pizza Expo over the 20 years. That's awesome. And you know, I think some of the most valuable things at Pizza Expo are the uh, intense workshops that you you do. And um, and I think a lot of people, uh, some people really just don't know that we offer these intensive, you know, uh, half day long sessions and then you break them out into two sessions. Um, what's it like um, you know, instructing in that type of an environment where, you know, it's an intensive, like, uh, long kind of session. How are you, how are you dealing with that? Let Glenn take all the work, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, when you do a, a 30 to 90 minute session, there's not a lot of time to drill down to the, the individual pizza owners and their you can answer general questions, uh, but drilling down is very difficult. When you do these workshops, uh, you know, the Sunday, Monday workshops where you're spending four hours with a group of people, you can drill down, you can spend half the time on content and half the time drilling down on specifics in their business. And that's the exciting part for me is yeah. when you can start to talk to people and they walk out of there going, oh my God, the value for them. You know, a lot of people, I think when this first started, they're like, I don't know if I want to pay uh, 250 bucks or whatever it is. And you think, Think about the value. One guy right. says, from the talk, he went back, he emailed me, he saved over $100,000 in a restaurant opening just with two of the things he learned from the talk. What you have at Pizza Expo is a very small percent of the pizzeria operators in the world. And of those 10,000 people who attend Pizza Expo, a small percentage of those actually go to the seminars. Yeah. So the people who are sitting in the seminars, to me, are the brightest in the industry. They're the brightest in the industry because they're there to learn and to take things back. Oh, I agree. I mean, I learned so much from the seminars. I mean, I'm sitting in there taking notes just like everyone else because, you know, for Pizza Today, we're, we're, always, uh, we're always learning. So give us an update. What, what's happening with Pizza Man Dan? Oh, boy. Uh, I think the biggest <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Uh, the, the challenges for us are the same as the challenges for everybody else. You've got, you know, you call them COVID challenges. Uh, but for us, there's been a lot of COVID opportunities. So a couple of things. First of all, we had to decide how we were going to maintain sales volume. Uh, the very first week of the shutdown, we dropped 50% in sales because I have 3,000, 6,000 square foot restaurants oh, wow. and they shut down those restaurants. So we immediately pivoted to uh, carry out specials. So our delivery was fine and that went up 25% as anticipated, but that was not enough to save the business. So we pivoted to carry out specials, went, went deep, unfortunately, but we went so deep that it tripled the volume. 
<laughs> so we had we had a lot of money to play with, not a lot of margin to play with. But what it allowed us to do was to pay our bills, to pay our employees, and not lose a single employee during this entire process. In fact, we were hiring the whole time. Wow. So whereas a lot of businesses, when when things started to come back, they had to rebuild up to that. We were already full steam. We were already substantially ahead in volume, and you know, we went from a crew of 200 to a crew of 250. So we, you know, we're just, we're ready for, for, for when this thing is coming back and it's still not back all the way. Uh, so that was, that was the biggest pivot for us, yeah. but then there was the opportunities as well. Um, so we went into full liquor licenses in my market. It used to cost $75,000 for a full liquor license and you couldn't get them. Um, they were, uh, we got them through the, the auctions. We got them through uh, brokers just giving them away. So it dropped down to 20000 And we were able to put full bars into several of our restaurants. So, you know, I know a lot of pizzerias already had that, but it's something we had never done because we were a traditional, you know, the old days pizzeria. But by adding full bars, and in one case, a nightclub, uh, that really enhanced uh, our business. Now so you Oh, okay. sorry, Josh. I was going to say, <laughs> let's, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, um, hey, what are some of the learning curves that you found going to offering, uh, offering liquor and beer and wine? Like, um, like what, did, what did you experience making the shift to it? We had already offered beer and wine. In fact, we were the first restaurant, the first pizzeria in California to legally deliver beer and wine. This is pre-COVID. Oh, we, awesome. we did that by buying a liquor store and using that license, uh, kind of a workaround, and, but yeah. we sold it to the city attorneys and it worked. So we were the first ones to legally do it. I know, I know a lot of pizzerias were doing it. <laughs> well, when we got into full liquor, um, what we discovered is that people behave poorly when they're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a traditional pizzeria, you're busy until eight or nine o'clock at night. Uh, your delivery might be busy until midnight if you're on a college campus or, you know, uh, then, of course, you're going to be busy till three o'clock in the morning. Right. Uh, but in our case, we're, we're military, but no college campus. So we're slowing down around eight or nine o'clock. What the nightclub portion does is it expands the pizzeria uh, to a 2 a.m. business. And so we have full entertainment at that location, um, you know, different uh, d DJs, bands, the whole nine yards as we've been allowed to do it, you know, the opening, closing, and opening, closing. Right. Um, but the biggest learning curve for me, surprisingly, I mean, it was great because you now you're serving pizza to people at one o'clock in the morning. They've been drinking. I mean, it, 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 huge business. It added, it added a whole nother third to our business because we had delivery, dine-in, and now we have nightclub. Uh, but the biggest learning curve for me was the security force. Uh, in other words, <laughs> hiring, training, and, and maintaining security was a challenge. So, so what, kind of, what kind of security would you have at night? Uh, it's, so, so explain to me how the setup is with the nightclub and the pizzeria. Are they connected, or is it all just one building? Or It's all one thing. So, so okay. imagine a, a pizzeria that um, has a dance floor okay. uh, and a stage. Uh, so you've got seating for, at that location, seating for about 200. And it's a traditional pizzeria until eight o'clock. We have a, a transition from eight to nine where we go to 21 and over at nine o'clock. So we're letting the families know, hey, your kids, we do have two karaoke nights where we, where we don't do that. We allow the family, it's family karaoke. So that goes all the way until closing. Um, but really Thursday through Saturday is gonna be your crazy scene uh, starting at nine o'clock going until two o'clock in the morning. And uh, you know, security force at first, I'm starting with four or five guys. Now I got 10 guys, a security wow. director, a security manager. Um, yeah, it was a learning curve. <laughs> you get the secret service around you, that many guys, gee. <laughs> um, so what, yeah, what, I mean, it's gonna take, it takes a special kind of employee to, to work and, you know, around that area with the, with the uh, drunk crowd and everything. It, 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 were, you, were you hiring different for, for that store versus the others? Uh, a little bit. We, uh, one of the strategies that we've also done this last two years as a pivot is I have been running pizzerias for 35 years and uh, I've owned, been an owner for 20 years. So the, the effort 
every time you put in a new location, the effort was just exponential. In other words, my, you know, I added, I'm working 70 hours a week. It just means I'm going to be working 80 hours a week. Right. So uh, the other pivot is we got our franchise license and we're franchising, but not to outside of the company. We are franchising strictly to our managers. Some of, some of my folks been with me for 30 plus years. So I know that they're profitable. I know they have the skills and I know they'll follow direction. So they become franchisees. And in, in this case, we took, uh, we franchised this nightclub to uh, the guy who was my right hand man for 30 years. And uh, he was known as the party guy. I don't know if you remember the party bus that we had there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was the one who ran that. Okay. He was known as kind of the party manager in our company. So he obviously, as you say, Josh, it's a different personality. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't think I could handle working till 2 a.m. every night. Uh, you know, I get, I start at six or seven in the morning and that's kind of my thing. I finish by eight o'clock at night and yeah. I'm probably in bed by 10. <laughs> so, you know, we first opened six months, I'm doing those hours, but I, I don't think I could do that as a lifestyle. Whereas that's what he lives for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, th 30 years is a pretty good vetting process for, for, uh, you know, for a franchisee. For a franchisee. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty good vetting process. <laughs> yes, you are correct. You know, something I'm curious about is as you continue to grow and as you continue to look at different opportunities, you know, what are you looking for when you add those franchises with your, with your staff? Like, what are you looking for within your staff, but also what are you looking for with those uh, additional units, you know, what, it, you know, locations, or are you looking for a certain, you know, you know, community, like, what are you looking for? Well, the first thing we're looking to do is to take the eight existing restaurants and seven of them will become franchises. In other words, oh, wow. converting okay. those so that, so that uh, my efforts are more towards developing the company and the growth rather than the day-to-day -day operations. Because a yeah. franchisee, they do step up. You know, it, now it's their baby, okay? Mm -hmm. And the value to us is is real clear. They're paying for a business, plus they're paying royalty fees. Um, so we get our investment back out of it, and we have enough money to continue to grow the company. So, um, and then if they grow to the point where they can open other locations, that would be the way that I would approach it. Again, we're not looking for anybody outside of the company. People call me and say, can we franchise? I say no. Um, you want to franchise just like anybody else. You start as a pizza maker, a driver, a cashier. You work way up to a supervisor. You work way up to a store manager. I eyeball you for five years, and if you're any good, then we'll talk about it. Right? So has, you know, it, has anyone ever taken you up on that? <laughs> um, no, they never take me up on that. You know, most people call them the franchisor are investors, yeah, right? Yeah. They're not. They're not pizza operators. So some investor calls and says, "Hey, I want to be a delivery driver so I can become yeah, a franchisee." Yeah. <laughs> I think they'll do it. You know, other companies say you got to do it for 30 days or something. They'll do it for 30 days, but that's yeah. about all. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you know, for us, for the future is entertainment. So, you know, pizza is an experience into itself. The unique part of pizza is it's a shared food. It's what drew me to the business. It's what keeps me passionate about the business. When you see how people share that experience together. So our goal in the future is to enhance that experience. So, so you know, the traditional pizzeria isn't necessarily dead, but to do high volume out of some, one of those is very rare. Um, very rare in the competition out there. So entertainment means that you take that pizza component, which is the best food you can build anything around. And then you say, okay, how do we enhance this? And the areas that we're looking at enhancing is, is esports, um, which is okay. not video games, yeah. but a true esports. Yeah. Right? Um, is, is, you know, they've done laser games, right? The laser tag, they've done bowling. Uh, they've done rope classes, zip lines. <laughs> you know, you, th you think you, you take all these components and you put them in one building of, uh, you know, a minimum 20,000 square feet, but really looking at more like 40,000 square feet. Um, and you've got full liquor. You've got the new digital ordering. So you're not having waiter and waitress service. You have runners coming from, uh, from back, you know, the, the service bars in the back. And, and the food is just brought out to people because you know where they are because they're ordering off the digital yeah. platform. And, and you create that experience where people come and they'll stay for a day. It, it's an entire experience. They might eat two meals there. They're certainly going to drink a lot in between. So um, my business partner, Josh, doesn't work in the business, but he is kind of the idea guy behind things. And his dream has been entertainment for a while. 
and between us, we've been studying it for about five years. So that's kind of the, the next growth component outside of the franchising approach where our own people will build the company. But I'm now, personally not looking for a, a, a 3,000 to 6,000 square foot that I want to open again. It's just, you know, yeah. that's, that's, that's work. <laughs> And I love the work. Those days are gone, huh? Yeah. It's time, time to have other people do that work. Yes. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Now, with those, uh, with those entertainment or uh, the entertainment spaces, are those going to be branded under a different um, thing? Or are you going to expand that into the Pizza Man Dance? Or is it going to be its own brand? We, you know, our shift from, from Pizza Man Dance to allow to understand the entertainment is we abbreviate ourselves. As a matter of fact, my own wife doesn't call me Dan. She calls me PMD. And uh, the, the Pizza Man Dan's, the yeah. acronym PMD, uh, is, is really what we started branding ourselves towards. And that allows us to move into other, other areas without confusing the public. Yes, yeah, so, that makes sense. That's, 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 that's a good scenario, yeah. <laughs> but it'll be, you know, it'll, be, it'll be similar in that we're taking the core of what we already are and just adding these other components to it. So we're yeah. not trying to reinvent that, that core wheel. Yeah. Well, there's so many ways you could go with that too. Cause somebody, one of my friends just sent me a thing where you can go in and you can run and follow these like Tetris boards, almost running with these like, I don't know. It sounded fun. So I was like, I'll go do it. I don't care. Let's spend all our money on it. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I can see you spending a whole, at least, you know, four or five hours at a place like that. Yeah, and, for sure. You know, one drink turns into, well, you know, a lot. And then, uh, <laughs> into a security <laughs> board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I think it's a wonderful idea. I love the idea of ordering straight from the table when everybody gets there. Cause you know, yeah. it's one of those things, if it's a big party, you don't want a, a server coming back and forth saying, is everyone here? Is everyone here? Are you ready to order? Yeah. So. Everybody, everybody has their own computer and okay. that's ordering and, and technology Fantastic. is such that, you know, fairly soon you're gonna be able to order from this device and move anywhere you want in the facility and we'll find you, <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Scary enough, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they might even be able to do that right now. Who knows? <laughs> it's available. It's a little expensive. Yeah, yeah I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Um, now, not to give anything away, but in, in an upcoming issue of the magazine, I tapped you for an article and I, I think it's really cool to talk about you know, what's happening in 2022, because I think you're right on the pulse of, you know, the, the issues that operators are going to have to deal with. Um, so, you know, for those people out there that are looking at, well, I'm not sure how to develop this year or what I'm doing because things are still a mess and in the air, you know, what kind of advice do you have for those pizzeria folks that, um, that are kind of still a lot in their, in flux? <laughs> um, you know, read, Pizza Today magazine. If, if you are in this business and you're not attending um, the, the, the seminars at Pizza Expo and you're not reading your own industry mags, all right, or blogs or whatever it is, then you're missing the biggest component of education because there's no, no school out there, no school out there that's going to teach you how to do this job, right? And most of us just do it on passion and we make so many mistakes. I say we because I'm definitely part of that. I can't even count the dollars of how many mistakes I've, I've made over the 35 years. So, you know, when you read this, the advantage is you're, and, and what I love about Pizza Expo and Pizza Today is they're tapping people in the business. And that's a change. Back in, back in the 90s, Pizza Expo had professional speakers. Right. And they were great speakers. They'd make you laugh, cry. They, they would hold your attention. Um, I couldn't even leave the room to use the restroom because they were so good, but they were not industry people. And yeah. so they would be talking about burgers and it wouldn't make any sense. It wasn't something we could take back to our pizzerias. But for the last 20 plus years, Pizza Expo has been very specific in working with people in the industry. So you're learning from people. It isn't people who theoretically have done. It. This is people who <laughs> have done it. And, and that's same, same is true of Pizza Day Magazine. When you're reading these articles, you know, you're not going to get a Wall Street level author out of it. But what <laughs> you are going to get is you're going to get real stuff. You're going to get real things about your business. And, you know, so yes, my advice is simply read it. All right. Yes, that article was fun to put together, Denise. And it, it, it is what I believe the challenges are going to be this year. And we're, we're 
you know, into January. And I, you know, I wrote that back at the end of the year. And you're right, it's, those are all coming true, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, sure, especially inflation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Okay, so we can't let you go without talking about all of your pizza swag. Now, those that go to Expo know that you have yeah. a pizza Corvette. They, uh, they have to have well, seen the pizza Corvette. Well, well one year we had it inside. We, yeah, we yeah. Had it inside. Yeah. Inside. Was awesome. but and then you, you have your ties you know you have your hoodie there so let me how many pieces articles do you have with pizza in them that you actively wear or drive or <laughs> you know? and should we get guinness book involved in this and yes. you know scott has his pizza box collection you know you might have your pizza swag collection so <laughs> Well, I'll tell you a couple stories that will enhance that. So the first thing is anybody who knows me um, where, where I'm you know, in, in a social setting, they'll say, uh, they'll say to their friends, just to impress them with their knowledge, say, say, you know, I have my pizza swag on. They say, look, he even has pizza socks. And sure enough, they, you know, <laughs> see, I know this guy, right? And I know he has another piece of apparel that he will not show you, but he <laughs> always wears pizza there also. And so they, they, they're impressed with that. <laughs> and then social media has a great time with it. So oh, yeah. I've got a pizza onesie. And I don't know if you know this, but I, ha I owned that before Katy Perry did. Well, <laughs> Katy Perry got, <laughs> so uh, got photoed with it. So then it, people were taking it and going, okay, putting side by side. Fantastic. PMD and the onesie and Katy Perry. And the whole thing was who wore it better, right? <laughs> and, and so then I've got, uh, I'll do pizza apparel. Uh, we're walking in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. So we've got our, our many vehicles in the parade all decorated. And I'm in front walking along in my pizza apparel, which has got some shamrock, you know, uh, St. Patrick's Day theme to it as well. So somebody took me and Willy Wonka and did the who wore it better kind of thing. So, yeah, we have a lot of fun with that. And I think the last story to get people to understand it is um, Destination Garage did a piece on the Corvette. So he came down and he's like, we're talking and we hadn't gone out in the Corvette yet. And he said, I don't get it. And I said, you will get in the car. So we're driving in the car and there was only two, there was two reactions. Every single person had a reaction, but there's two reactions. They either stopped, opened their mouth and started taking pictures. Or <laughs> if they were local, they yelled out at the top of their lungs, PMD. <laughs> so, you know, you have, you have that uh, fun part. So you're taking a fun food, and if you can add the fun to it in the community, that's that's what we're after. Yeah, yeah I think it was about six years ago at the show, maybe. Yep. Denise and I walked out. We had it parked in the parking lot. We walked out there. We were like, we're going to do a photo shoot with this car right now. <laughs> we so totally we did, did a, a photo, photo shoot. shoot. I was like laying across the car. It was so much. I mean, I didn't hurt the car, state I promise. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it was there. So it was great. Um, cool. Now, the one last thing I'll, a I'll ask you about is, uh, you know, Signups are still available right now for Pizza Expo and for your seminar or for your workshops. Uh, can you just like briefly say anything about those workshops to get people jazzed to jazz to maybe sign up? All right. So the workshops you're referring to are the um, uh, School of Pizzeria Management on yes, Sunday. Correct. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, so Glenn Sabolsky and I have put one together that we uh, we give every year. However, it's not the same every year because things have been changing that much. Yeah. So for sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, what I would encourage is to consider coming early to Pizza Expo. You know, rather than coming in Monday night and and you know having a couple of days at it, come in Saturday night, and then spend time at one of those workshops on Sunday and again on Monday. That's four hours of your time on Sunday, four hours of your time on Monday, and you are going to get something so much more beneficial than just the 30 to 90 minute talks. You're, you're, you're in a true workshop. That workshop is going to have you take that knowledge and immediately apply it to your business because these 30 to 90 minute seminars, you're like, wow, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. I'm busy, you get back, you're into the operations and it's all gone. But when you are um, immersed in four hours or eight hours of education, you're, it's not just notes that you're taking. Your brain is starting to, to retain that information and you're going to go back with it. And it, it, it'll be the most, you'll get more value out of Sunday, Monday, not more fun, 
because <laughs> the real fun happens on the floor and, and with I mean I've been in some of your sessions they're off they are fun too they are fun all too. right all right <laughs> Not, not as fun as twirling pizzas and, yeah. <laughs> and watching the bake-offs and all that, but you're going to get more value out of those two days mm -hmm. than any other two days in your year of investing in, in learning about the pizza business. I would agree. Well, Dan, thanks so much for coming yeah. on the show. We appreciate it. And we, uh, we'll, have, we'll have you back on to talk about, talk about something else next time. So, uh, <laughs> you know, but we're well, jazz. Can't wait to Bye. see you. Can't wait to see the, the Corvette in the lot again. Maybe I'll do another photo shoot. You know, my hair's changed. It's really long now. So maybe I'll do it with it. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, we'll catch you in Vegas in just a couple months. So uh, we'll see you then. Thank you very much. Take care, Denise. Take care, Josh. See you. All right. Take care.